Hey guys, welcome back to Just Be Handy. Today is the day that I'm going to take the uh, front end components off and replace them. Um, so it's going to be a big job today. I'm uh, prepping for everything, so I got most of my tools set up. Got the car kind of situated in the garage, so I have plenty of room to work around it. And, uh, well, it's going to be a long day. I was estimated it would be eight hours per side, $1,000 for labor, and then parts was going to be another, uh, basically, um, if I was just doing the lower control arms, and that's what I was quoted for, it was going to cost me like $500 for the lower control arm and $1,000 for um, labor. I basically said, well, I'm going to try it myself. Found out that there's a, the knuckle hub combo. Since I'm going to be in there, I'll just do the uh, CVs. That's basically going to add another hour or two for me. Um, and then the lower control arm. And the reason being is there's, a, um, there's an engine mount in the way. And that's where a lot of the issues come in. So we'll go through this. I'm a DIYer. I like to do things myself. So as I discover things, we'll run through it together and um, go from there. Since I'm going to be changing the CVs, um, it's good to remove that cap and then put the car back down and then undo the axle nut while the car is on the ground because it's hard to get those axle nuts off. So what I'm going to do is lift the car, get the tire off, then pop out that cap, put the wheel back on, lower the, the car, and then proceed to take the axle nut off. All right, guys, I got the cap off here. You can see that. Then I did uh, rotate the tire so I could get a good view of that pinch bolt there for keeping the uh, axle nut on. We're, I'm going to put a, um, a chisel and just chisel that up so that this will be able to spin free and then put a lot of penetrant on it and then I'll be able to get to that. So I'll, I did the same thing with the other side. I tried to get them both so where I can see them and they're not pointed down. You could, when you have the car up in the air, you could rotate the tire and get it to where you want it to be. So you can see there, I did the same thing. It's pointed this way so I can get at it. And uh, I'll spray some penetrant on them and knock them out with a chisel and then we'll go from there. All right, so now we want to be able to get this chisel in here like this and bend that up. A little bit more. I think that's going to do it. Then I'm going to spray some penetrant and get in there. Okay guys, here's an issue I ran into. The nut that came with the axle from uh, Advanced Auto and CarQuest part didn't, isn't the 12 point and the tool I had that I got for it fits pr perfectly but on the car it's a 12 point. So I need to go run to the store and get that. Hopefully you can avoid that to know that the one on the car, if it's OE, is a 12 point. The aftermarket ones may be uh, just a regular uh, hex. So I would say check to see what you have before starting. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath, lubricate everything I need to loosen up so that when I come back, Everything has got penetrant on it, so that's what I'm going to do. 
run to the store, get the proper tool. I will not go forward without the proper tool because if you strip this, there's no way to get it off. So you got to be cautious and take your time. All right. All right, guys. It's a 30 millimeter 12 point socket. And I got an impact axle uh, axle socket for that. And I'm putting my gun at the maximum setting. It may take about 400 foot pounds of torque to get these off. All right, it came loose. That's awesome. So that's all we want to do for right now is just get it loose. Make sure it's uh and then we'll uh, take the car up in the air and then get it off uh, all the way. Okay, next we're going to remove the tire so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, as you can see, I did hit a few things with penetrant because I do want to change out these tie rods. I sprayed here. I sprayed as much as I could. You could see that that bushing is torn a little bit, so it wasn't too bad, but it's a good time to get at it. Uh, I'm going to change the whole knuckle, so I did put penetrant on here. And again, we got that axle nut loose. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to take the caliper off, hang it so it's out of the way. We need to get the speed sensor off before we do much because if the speed sensor is compromised, then you'll have a lot of issues with your uh, ABS lights or ABS sensing. So we need to get that off properly. Um, and then we'll just start working on getting that uh, mount off. We've got to get this plate off here to get access. And once we get all these bolts off, we should be able to get that lower control arm out, get the uh, knuckle with all the hub out, and everything loosened up. All right, guys, so, so far I've hung the brake caliper. I've gotten the cover off, as you can see it there. I've got some evaporust there for any rusty parts of the bolts, so I don't have to deal with that when I put everything back together. You can see the amount of rust I'm dealing with. This is a 2005 Highlander front wheel drive. The other thing I've done is I have loosened up that top nut and I did spray everything underneath that, um, that mount. I will need to loosen up some engine mounts to be able to get that out as well because I'll have to lift the engine a little bit. And um, just an FYI, when you go to loosen this, it is forward towards the front of the car. You have to hold on to it with another uh, wrench here and then move that forward to loosen it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll mark from the center to somewhere on this shaft so I can get that as a reference so I don't have to worry about the alignment being too far off until I can get the alignment done afterwards. And all I need to do is just put a mark and go for a measurement somewhere in the neighborhood of, oh, I'm thinking 16 inches. Let's see. No, that's too far. It's probably going to be somewhere around um, 10 inch mark or so to help me figure out the center of where that's at. So I'll mark it up there with the yellow and go 10 inches. 
um, and then that will help me get the alignment back on. As I alluded to, there is no alignment for that bolt on this one. If it was an alignment bolt, then you would see dots on it to tell you where the cam is. So I'm not going to worry too much about it, but I will mark it regardless and just put it put it there. I'll put a, a dot on the on, on the strut and then a dot on the um, on the bolt. Okay, it looks like there's about three mounts that you want to kind of loosen up. So one of them is this strut mount here that would. You see there isn't much upward movement on that and we have to go about two three inches. There's the one down there that I can see. Let's see if I can get better focus of that. There we go. So there's that one there. And then the other one would be the other mount on the other side. Thankfully these are all mounted down so I can get them loosened up and then I'll put the jack underneath the uh, transmission housing or engine housing. So the other one will be on, uh, on that side. I'll have to take that wheel off. And um, that should allow the engine to move up. Now, if you have a, um, an all-wheel drive, be cautious that maybe your, um, your drive shaft might have a support, um, basically a rubberized support. So you need to probably loosen that up. This is a front wheel drive, so I don't have to worry about that. But again, if you have an all wheel drive, take caution, look at the drive shaft going to the back, make sure everything is loose there, because if you're lifting the engine and that um, mount or support for a rear bearing is there, you could really damage things. So Please be careful with that. All right. All right, uh, speed sensor was a 10 millimeter and uh, thankfully it wasn't warped or anything so it came out real easy. Um, I used a, an impact just because I didn't want to mess around with trying to twist the head off but it came off quite easy for me and I'm thankful for that. I don't have to go buy uh, speed sensor. I'll just clean it up, get some of that metal debris off when I put it into the new uh, knuckle. Okay, next to get the knuckle off, we're just going to remove these three bolts down here that go to the uh, lower control arm. 17 millimeter bolt. These are 17 millimeter. Okay, the next final thing to remove the knuckle is to pound these back. I just put them on the edge, so these bolts that hold the knuckle. And once I do that, I should be able to pull the knuckle away because I don't have the speed sensor in the way. Everything else is gone. Then it's a matter of pulling it out of the strut and relieving the bottom there. So always protect the threads, pull it back. There we go. And then you could just undo it by hand by that point. Okay, I'm going to move the camera away so you can see this better. I can undo this nut now. Alright, so that's the knuckle off. So we'll get to that engine mount 
It's going to be 17 millimeter bolts, I believe, or uh, nuts. So I'll try and see how it goes. But look at the axis you get by doing that. One. Okay, there's still the mass on top of it of the engine so next thing to do would be to lift the engine so I could get that off and uh, we'll take a look at everything okay guys uh, I had to take out a 10 millimeter bolt that was right there for this um, power steering line so that I don't pinch it because it goes right over the bracket for that engine mount also when you're lifting the engine, make sure you use like a 4x4 four four on the aluminum portion of the engine. Don't put it on a pan. So what I have it on here is the flywheel housing between the transmission and the engine. And I use a 4x4 four four with the jack. And as I'm jacking up the, the engine, I look around all sides to make sure and even in the engine compartment to make sure I'm not pinching anything or stretching anything. That's how I found the power steering line was getting compromised. All right, guys. Okay, guys, I uh, ended up removing this engine mount that sits right in here. And it gave me a little bit more access to this area. And it's going to uh, prevent the... Uh, engine from being held down so that engine mount was kind of holding everything down and while I was at it I did loosen up the um, the retainer clip for the bearing housing for the CV half shaft show you that right here you can see right in here I did that and then I took out the uh, bolt that holds on to the bearing so that I could uh, pull all this out. Now what I'm going to do is put a pry bar between this bit housing and the half shaft and pull out and then you're going to need um, you're going to need a uh, catch can because some fluid is most likely going to come out of the transmission so again, um, I did take that retaining clip off and took out that bolt down there. And uh, we'll get going on trying to get that uh, CV half shaft out before we remove that lower control arm. All right, guys, ran into a little bit of an issue. As you can see, the CV just kind of... Um, pulled out on me and the bearing is not coming out of the pillow block. I did take out the retaining clip and the retaining bolt that goes into that pillow block where the bearing is. That would be right in that area there. And uh, been having a heck of a time getting that out. So one of the things I might do here next is Get that pillow block out but there's a bolt that is covered by that uh, spindle looking thing and um, I've had to grind down a 14 millimeter uh, wrench I have so I can get in there I'll uh, show you a closer look on that in just a second here just to show you this is um, the half shaft that came off of there and I did take the retaining clip off and the retaining bolt. Alright guys, uh, here's basically what I had to do with that pillow block is move that cup as much as I could and then work 
this bolt out as much as possible. Then I'm going to take out the other bolts and then just pry this out and then work that bolt out. And then I should be able to slide that half shaft out of there. All right, guys, we'll keep going on this. All right, guys, here's what happened. Uh, just a recap. I couldn't get this out because the bearing is just rusted in tight. I had the screw out. I had the retaining clip out, and they're both in this solution here, as you could see. It's a... It's called rust, just to get the rust off of those parts. And I hammered and I pushed and I did everything I could to get try to get this out. I used heat on here to try and expand it and push on it for, uh, and hammer from the back side. Then I went and rented a specialty tool. And maybe this, you guys will have luck with this. It's a slide hammer. It goes on here like this, and then you basically can uh, have it pull, but I had to take the strut out and um, the knuckle and everything to just be able to get at it, but I was doing that regardless. Um, I tried getting the bolts out of the block here. You could see this is the back side that would be mating with the block. There was a couple of dowel pins. And because this shaft goes into the, um, into the um, differential, it basically was stiff. I couldn't move it. I tried prying to get past the dowels. And also, as you could see, I couldn't get all the teeth to come out. And I even turned it so it was even with these flats, and it was actually worse than being in one of these valleys. And so it always had three to four teeth engaged at all times. So until I cut that end off here to be able to get some more movement, and what I did to cut it off is I used a cutoff wheel with my cheap Harbor Freight uh, angle grinder. And then because I couldn't rotate it, I had to go in from the back side with my Sawzall and a steel blade on it. It's a Diablo steel blade that I put on my old Ryobi. And I got in there and cut, cut that shaft and you could see it wasn't fun. You could imagine it was a lot of sparks and things that happened to get there. Uh, but I finally have it off. And thankfully I have a press where I can push down on this end, but I'll have to um, hold this here and here and um, press this out and it's not going to be fun but at least we'll get it out okay we'll do that next okay I have it set up in the uh, 20 ton press and we'll just keep pushing it through till it falls out there we go It's coming loose. Oh, it's twisting on me. There we go. She came out. Boy, is that rusty. Wow. No wonder it wouldn't come out. And let's take a look at the bearing. Look at that. We hit it every which way. It was so rusted in there. Okay, guys. We'll just keep going in, on this job. Here's the press 20 ton. I have it in the corner of my garage. They come in handy on stuff like this. So um, they don't cost that much when you look at how much trouble they save you as you saw here. Hey guys, this is what 
it looks like after cleaning. I put uh, anti-seize in there and um, it should be good to go. There's a little rubber snubber that was in there too that pinches against the uh, bearing. So we'll see how all this goes together. And if it doesn't go together well, I'll just um, leave it be and continue with some uh, with the other part of the installation. All right, here we go. All right, guys, we're in the home stretch here. I basically have the brake caliper hanging and the speed sensor so that I could lift everything up. I have the sway bar link um, is basically still loose because I don't have it hooked up on the other side either. So next I'm going to lift this engine mount and get it up. And then also I have that bearing um, mount over there with uh, the anises in it. And as you can see, everything's a straight shot. Everything's installed, ready to go. Remember, don't forget that little rubber snubber that goes in, in that hole for the pinch bolt. All right, guys, here's the Moog control arm lower. It comes with a brand new ball joint all ready to go. This is the new nut for that, so I'll just keep it this way until we're ready to put on the strut. I raised the car enough to be able to put this on. Uh, we don't want to forget this guy here. It goes on to here. All right. And then these have a little bit of Loctite on them, so I'm not going to put any anti-seize on it. But um, what we'll do is first get this guy going in here. And then this will lay here. As you notice, you don't have to take that mount all the way out. So, um, let's see here. There we go. Get all right, so I uh, got these in. No problem, but I have to put the guy in the bottom in, uh, so we'll get that started. All right, this guy is 19 millimeter. all of those bolts there and then we will um, put the engine um, yeah the uh, vehicle back down so we can get all the mounts tightened up okay we're going to torque everything to 150 foot-pounds for these Must be getting late in the day. All right. There we go, 150. That's it. All right. All right. Now we have the mount back in place. The swing arm is all torqued up. As you can see, that bolt was just there under the mount. And everything is coming together now. I'll just uh, torque down the mount and then um, we'll keep going from there. Okay, all engine mounts, 65 pound, foot pounds. Okay. Okay. 
then this one is also 65 pounds but it's a 19 millimeter and I'll need to get a regular socket for that one okay All right, guys, I wanted to show you, look at all those metal shavings. This is the end that goes into the transmission. Look at all that debris. You really don't want that in your transmission. I would suggest cleaning it all off with brake parts cleaner before you put that on. And then look at that lip of that seal, uh, seal cover. Just kind of hammer it out. Make sure it looks good if you get one like this. Don't just use it like that it might pinch the seal you could get a pair of pliers and just kind of get them to go uh, where they should with a pair of uh, flat nosed pliers there Not, don't use too much hammering but definitely this side needs to be super clean there's a lot of debris I'm kind of not very happy with that quality there um, this bearing looks good. Everything seems to be going good. Always inspect everything before you go too far. Um, I think we're looking good. Otherwise, the snap ring needs to go here. I cleaned it up. You can see that. You just pop it in here and feed everything through. Um, splines look actually cleaner on this side where they don't need to be as clean because they're not in a transmission. So I'm going to hit this with brake parts cleaner, get all that off, uh, straighten out this cover, because that cover and this cover I don't think are the same size, and I don't want to try and take that old cover off and put it on. But you can see everything looks to be about the same sha uh, shaft size, so it should go in fairly easily. All right. All right, guys. You see how much cleaner it is? And then I just straightened it out by just taking a pair of these flat nose type pliers and just moving everything back. These are all metal shavings that you see here that came out with me hitting it with brake parts cleaner. Look at all that. So those are all metal shavings that could have been in your transmission. All I did was just use a can of brake parts cleaner and cleaned all of this. That's why I have it at the edge of the table. They didn't want all that spray back. All right, guys, here we go. You want to first make sure that the shaft gets past all of that without getting any anises on it. There we go. And then kind of get it to this point. there's anything else okay so it's hitting the belt here and, and then I got to go underneath and just kind of guide it through There we go. All right. Now it's going to be a matter of getting that ring on. These are too big. I'm going to have to get a pair of regular pliers.
All right, I think that did it. I'll check it all around and make sure it's retained. But I think it feels like it went in pretty good. Check it out. I can see the top is in fairly good. All right, we're almost there. Now I gotta just uh, tighten that pinch bolt in with a uh, 14 millimeter socket and that is going to just be by hand. There's no need to go to town on that one. It's got a little rubber plug that pushes on the bearing so it doesn't move around. Snug. Everything looks good. Same distance apart. Well, that's a thing of beauty after all that struggle. Guys, thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. And uh, you guys know my tenacity now. I am a DIYer and there's things to learn along the way. And I hope you guys are learning a lot here. Especially what not to do. All right, this, now I'm going to replace uh, this tie rod. So let's see here. All right, wow. We'll clean that out and then put some um, anti-seize on it. Get it all nice and clean and then we'll get an alignment done too after we get it roadworthy, uh, and I can schedule one. This will be close enough for that alignment. So we're getting there. Uh, before I do that, I do need to put in that 10 millimeter bolt back here. So I'll do that right away. All right, we got it in there, get it started. All right, so that line is good. No leaks, looks good. We have our half shaft sitting there, all buttoned up. And we've gotta finish cleaning this guy off and put the tie rod in. And then I will bring in the knuckle and then mount the tie rod end to the knuckle and uh, we'll go from there. Again guys, the tie rod I'm gonna use is this Moog with a grease fitting. And what I noticed is these are 18 millimeter nuts that come with it, not the 17 millimeter. And they are basically the same size as I tr did on the other area there. And guess what? These, I think, are made in the USA. Yep, look at that. Go figure. Nice. So, anyways, new tie rod ends going on. All right, I'm going to use a little anti-seize here. This stuff is thick. Get it all over there. All right. And we will spin this new one on. go all 
that's basically almost the same amount of turns. All right. And when we get the knuckle put in, we'll put that on. All right, guys, here's the new knuckle hub combo I got from Moog. This is, again, for a front-wheel drive six-cylinder or four-cylinder, not the all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive is going to have a different part number. But look at how easy this moves compared to the old one. It basically starts to move the hub around. This is, I can basically twirl it. This one, it stops as soon as I stop moving it. This one goes on for a little bit. So it'll be a lot, lot better for fuel economy, that's for sure. All right, we'll get this on. Now I need to torque that nut up to 90 foot-pounds. So I'm going to do it before I put on the... All right, so first we need to take this nut off. And then they have this protective cap so that by the time you get it here, it's still protected. So then I will put the knuckle on. And there it is. And the best thing to do to get it on there is to just kind of line it up. ball joint will follow a little bit and then it will just kind of rest in there you see that right there the next thing to do is to get this guy in there and then start it so it helps you hold the knuckle in place Oh, wrong, wrong nut. There you go. You got to take it out of the bag. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that. It's probably too close. There we go. You got to push down on that, get the nut started. And this is going to help you hold things in place. Then we get the nut on here. And then I need to torque it down to 90 foot pounds per the specifications. All right, so I'll go get that torque wrench and we'll get to it. Okay, it is a 22 millimeter socket. That goes on there. Whoop. <laughs> Got a little bit more out of it. Lining up, oh, a little bit more is all we need. There we go, we got it. Oh, and it needs just a little bit more. And the cotter pin will be clear. Let's try that. Woo wee. Then away from other things. But stop that nut from rotating. Everything looks clean here. Now I can actually put the CV in there. So why don't I do that before I put... Take this 
nut off. I got this nut with the got this nut with the um, with the knuckle from Moog, and not the one with the manufacturer of the. wish I didn't put in the going for a while. All right, so torque up this by hand for now. Everything is pulling in nicely. Did line up with the marks I had before. Top bolt is in the top. Even though, like I said, with the double lines on these, it means that they are not for, uh, they're not canned for anything to get the uh, alignment adjusted. Usually the top one has, you can get a cammed one to get the camber set. So, all right. We're definitely getting there now. I need to put the rotor on so I can get the caliper on. Oh, I need a quick break to get a couple of tools. All right, guys, we're gonna put the calipers back on. Type on the bottom one. So I'm going to torque up the um, these to 76 foot pounds, these will get torqued to 160. Then I'm going to put on the tie rod for the sway bar over here. Torque this guy to 36. And guys, after that, we put the wheel on and torque that to 217. I'll show you that next, but from here on, I'm just going to keep buttoning things up. I do have to do the strut with the strut bar across still. I have not done that, but once I do that, it'll be close to getting everything done. Um, speed sensor, of course, put the lines in here. And what it is is the brake line goes in first and then this guy kind of straddles that and then the bolt goes through there. So um, after that's done, I'll get the wheels on, but don't forget, measure the amount of fluid that came out in that pan when, when the engine, when the differential was draining and add that amount of fluid back in, it's probably gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of a half a quart but I'll double check that as well and we can go from there. All right, I'm going to get a lot of stuff buttoned up and then we'll recap a little bit later when I have to torque these guys down and add the fluid. Hey guys, do you see this? 
This sat in Evaporus for two days. Remember what it used to look like before I did that? Look at that. Wow. That's the one that came out of here. All right. I'll let you guys go for now. And then we'll, all I have left is to put in that uh, sway bar link. And I did uh, put in the cotter pin there and the Zerk fitting to grease that up. And everything is torqued down. And pretty soon I'll be finishing up. All right, guys. Got the torque wrench set to 217 as it says on the lug for the axle nut here there we go that's that side driver that'll be long enough to get in there and give me Wow. All right, guys, it basically came out to be just a little over a quart. I think if I just add a quart, I'll be good to go. You see that 32 ounce mark right there? And we probably have another two, three ounces. So I'm just going to add a quart to it. Um, and that will be good to the system. All right, guys. So just a recap. We got everything buttoned up for the whole front end rebuild. Everything is back together. I need to still add a quart of transmission fluid to the vehicle before I start it up and go anywhere. Other than that, guys, thanks for sticking with me. As you see, it takes a lot of tenacity to do stuff like this, especially when you run into the trouble we did with the passenger side, uh, with that pillow block, as I call it, or bearing uh, carrier for the half shaft. Other than that, uh, everything was going to go fairly smooth with these Moog um, basically knuckle hub carriers with the, the uh, bearing in there. I mean, that was a nice adder. I have a whole new front end now. I just need to get it aligned. Again, um, if you've learned anything, enjoyed it, got to enjoy my tenacity and how I stick with it, and you guys stuck with it, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. I'd like to grow this channel, and I'd like to hear from you. Have a wonderful and blessed Memorial Day weekend.